Hey everybody, Christy Titus here. I'm with Preston Lentfer, Team Hornady, and we're here for the final step of our Reloading um, 101 class series that we've been putting together. And we get to put everything together now. Yep, at this point we need to insert a primer, we need to put in a powder charge, and we need to seat a bullet. But the first step is gonna be seating a primer. So we've got some large rifle primers here mm -hmm. for our, uh, the 6.5 PRC. And if you want to, we'll just grab a primer one by one uh, drop it into the primer cup on the press. Um, there's many ways to prime. You can uh, use a handheld priming tool. There's bench mounted priming tools. You, a lot of the presses you can seat on the press and that, that's the way I prefer to do it. So if you want to, let's uh, get started priming. Perfect. Okay, Christy, now that we have our primer seated, it's time to charge these cases with powder. Mm -hmm. And so we need to refer to our reloading manual. In this case, we're doing a 6.5 PRC and we intend on loading 143 grain ELDX. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use Reloader 26 powder. It's a proven powder uh, for accuracy and, and good standard deviation and extreme spreads in this cartridge. Uh, we're not gonna go right up to max. So we're gonna actually back it down a little bit. Let's uh, try 55.6 grains. We've got uh, powder in our Auto Charge Pro right now as we speak. So I'm going to actually change the target though. Because it says 57 and that's right. our max. We want to back down from max. We don't want to start at the max charge, but this is going to be a nice, nice load. Uh, I've used this load in the past and we'll see um, how it shoots in your rifle. That's incredible. Yeah, we can actually make it go a little bit faster. We can there probably fine tune it a little bit, but if you'd want to put the powder mm -hmm. um, into one of those cases, we'll just keep on moving. Uh, as soon as you put the powder pan back on, It'll, it will uh, dispense again. That takes the work out of this process. It really does. If people want to learn how to use the Auto Charge Pro, is there a video on the Hornady website that shows you demonstrating on how the setup is, or is the manual pretty self-explanatory? Uh, this one's actually quite intuitive compared to our previous model. So the manual is helpful, but we do have videos online as well on our YouTube channel, um, as well as on our website directly. All right, now we have uh, the powder charges into our cases. What I like to do is take a flashlight and actually inspect them, make sure that we haven't uh, missed any cases, that wouldn't be a good thing, and make sure nothing's a little, uh, nothing's out of whack and everything's at about the same level. So if you would take a look in there and see how we did. And these all look great. Okay, so we all got powder. Um, now we need to set up our seating die. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the sizing die out. We're done with that. Just drop in the die caddy here. Uh, we have never set up this uh, seating die, so we're gonna set it up from scratch. Uh, lock and load bushing into the press. A Little bit of a turn. Um, I like to grab a case, and actually raise that to the top of the stroke. And at this point, I'm going to turn the die down until it stops. When it stops, that's the most minimum amount of crimp we're gonna add. Uh, we actually don't need to put any crimp on these, so we're actually gonna back that off once we do feel it uh, stop. These have adequate neck tension. Uh, there's no need to, to actually put any crimp on these. You can if you want to, but these bullets don't have a cantilever, but, um, oh, as you can see, the die body stops. So there's the most minimal amount of crimp. Just want to back it off to take any crimp out. So we're going to take it out a full turn, drop our lock ring down. We'll actually set that with the Allen wrench here. After you've made contact, is it just a general rule of thumb that you back it off a full turn? Correct. Yeah, it could be a full turn, could be two turns, but a full turn is going to ensure even with any case variations in length you might have, you're not going to engage in any crimp. Um, so we've got our crimp set. I'm going to back this out quite a little ways um, and we can actually start to see the bullet. So these are the 143 grain ELDXs. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set this in the case mouth. We might get a little bit of contact here. Yep, we did seed it a little bit. I bet we're nowhere near close enough. So this at this point, it's kind of like a 
Turn it in until you get to the right seating depth. So now we look at the overall length here and compare it into the handbook, correct? Right. So right now we're way out there, 3.160. Yeah. We got to get to 2.950. Uh, your magazine length uh, is something to consider here as well. Your particular magazine can only handle up to about 2.955. So 2.950 will be perfect for, for your rifle and, and this bullet. So in order, now we just take the... To yeah, we take the cedar adjustment and screw it down increments at a time until we get to where we're, we're looking to go. And that is just the seating adjustment there. Yeah, that's just how, how far we're gonna seat the bullet into the case. Measure the overall length again. Yep, and it's it's really a rinse and repeat process until we get it set. All right, that was a pretty good guess. We're only off by 43 thousandths at this point, but now it's kind of like a... Slow process. Yeah, it really does get tedious when you get really close. This is a trial and error process. Now, what happens if you um, your overall length is too short? Well, it's not an issue as far as safety is concerned. So you can use it as a fowler or a sight or something like that. Um, but you can actually pull the bullet and redo it. You might have to resize your neck though. Um, sometimes I'll just pull the bullet out a little bit and then reseat it if I, if I have too many that are off like that. Okay, that's 2.952. We're going for 2.950. Let's seat a few more and see how close we are. Uh, there can be a little bit of variation. We are mm -hmm. measuring base to tip. If you wanted the most accurate measure possible, measurement possible, um, you'd want to measure off of the O-Drive with our bullet comparator, um, but it's not required. It's not necessary at this point. Okay. And now once this die is set, you just remove them and then you can use them over and over again is that correct right if we want to load this particular bullet at this overall length literally we can pull the die out with an eighth of a turn put it in the die backs come back come back in a month put it back into the press and we're it, it's it's already set once again this has been a very informative series from what equipment that you're going to need to reload ammunition to bench configurations case prep and then finally reloading that's right, there is a lot to reloading and there's a lot of tools out there, some of them necessary, some not, but we've we've kind of outlined the, the steps that you will have to do in order to make reloaded ammunition for your gun. And I'm really excited to actually take these to the range, get my data and uh, go hunting this fall. Yeah, it'll be the most rewarding shot you've ever taken. If all of you watching have additional questions, go online to the Hornady website. Make sure you get a copy of the reloading guide, which will answer a tremendous amount of your questions. Or feel free to call the Hornady customer service team. They're here in Grand Island, ready to take your calls with a ton of expertise and knowledge. So thank you all for joining us.